So ACTR amyloidosis, needless to say, has undergone a, a true renaissance in terms of both diagnosis and therapies. We'll focus on diagnosis for this part. Uh, so the beauty of ACTR amyloidosis diagnosis is that it's really quite easy. So uh, it's a two-step process, three if you count genetic testing, that somebody is suspicious, they need to rule out a monoclonal protein to make sure a patient does not have AL amyloidosis, and then perform technetium scintigraphy um, uh, within the United States, a PYP scan or DPD scan in Europe and other parts of the world. And uh, with this two-part test, you are able to make the diagnosis or rule out the diagnosis of the large majority of time. If there is a monoclonal protein uh, presence, of course, they may still have ATTR amyloidosis and just an uh, a unrelated MGUS, and then they'll need a uh, tissue biopsy, usually into myocardial biopsy. But that's, of course, the minority of patients. Uh, once you make a diagnosis, you can uh, offer genetic testing to determine if it's wild type or variant. Though right now, that won't necessarily affect therapies. So uh, really simple, the problem is getting the message out. And uh, it's not, uh, and it, it's really about suspicion, when to be suspicious about the diagnosis, and then the know-how of what tests to order. And uh, so when we think about where, how to be suspicious, there's two ways to do it. There is looking for red flags, that things that coexist with ATTR, amyloid cardiomyopathy, like carpal tunnel syndrome or lumbar spinal stenosis, which is fine and all, except for the fact that cardiologists never ask about carpal tunnel and lumbar spinal stenosis and never will. So um, if somebody who's asking about that is already knowledgeable about the disease and is not the person we need to target. Um, so, but patients know they have it. So in terms of educating patients, and you've already started to see this with even things like direct-to-consumer advertising, um, it actually makes a lot of sense to focus on these extra cardiac manifestations that they know they have, along with their heart failure, atrial fibrillation, or need for a pacemaker, and then they can go to their healthcare provider and say, please, can you do these testing? For, for healthcare providers, though, it needs to be much more focused on the basic findings from a, uh, to be suspicious from a cardiac standpoint. And what we're looking at there is mainly uh, the imaging findings. Uh, most, any patient who has atrial fibrillation or who has uh, heart failure or who has heart block is going to, at some point, get an echocardiogram. And what are the basic findings on, echocardio on an echocardiogram and in what demographics that should trigger an evaluation? And uh, I've certainly been an advocate of saying it should be pretty broad. So even mildly increased wall thickness in the right population, which you could argue what it is, but probably men above age 60 and maybe women above age 65, you see that combination and it should trigger the testing because the testing is non-invasive, it's quite accurate, and it's not particularly expensive, and most importantly, because we can do a lot about it if we make a diagnosis. The last point I'll make is that the other less common form of ATTR amyloidosis are the patients who have the hereditary or variant forms uh, that cause mainly polyneuropathy. Now, uh, there whom we really need to target more than anyone are the neurologists, uh, because you have a 100% accurate test that is very simple and straightforward, which is genetic testing for TTR amyloidosis. And patients who, ex who present with unexplained or worsening polyneuropathy often will get a battery of tests looking for things like heavy metals and other unusual diseases. Unfortunately for most uh, clinicians, most neurologists, just simple genetic testing for the TTR gene is not one of those tests. And if the, that was included and it comes back showing a pathologic mutation, almost certainly that's the cause of the polyneuropathy. So a smaller population, but a really important one.